Okay, so we have this uh, practice midterm. We have mock midterm, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you just got a chance to look at that. And what I'm going to first do is go through the answers. Uh, you know, just call out. Uh, you can go ahead and take one of these here so that you can see what the answers were this practice midterm. Okay, you can write on that. Uh, you can take this back with you. I'm going to call out the answers. It is my suggestion that you be looking at your paper to see what you circled rather than looking up here as I call those out. In fact, just to ensure that, I'm going to call them out from the paper just so that people don't get locked in the screen because you're looking at the screen and you're missing your paper. It's more efficient if you look at your paper. I'll call them out first and then we'll go through them. Okay. So the answer to number one is B. The answer to number two is C. The answer to number three is A. The answer to number four is A. The answer to number five is C. The answer to number six is D. The answer to number seven is D. The answer to number eight is is C. The answer number 9 is E. The answer number 10 is A. The answer number 11 is D. The answer number 12 is A. Answer to 13 is D. Answer to 14 is C. Answer to 15 is B. Answer to 16 is D. Answer to 17 is B. Answer to 18 is A. Answer to 19 is D. Answer to 20 is C. And the answer to 21 is B. So take a couple seconds to go ahead and uh, See how many you got right, count the number you got right, and then uh, take that number and put it in the top of your fraction. And um, put the number 21 in the bottom of your fraction, and then that should be your percent right. So if you got 21 out of 21, what percent is that? If you got 20 out of 21, that's what, 90 something, whatever? Yes, sir. Huh? Number 19, answer is D. 19, the answer is D. Any other ones? Huh? Number 21, the answer is B. B as in boy. 21, the answer is B as in boy. Everyone know how to calculate your percentage, correct? Okay. How many got 100? How many people got 100? Okay. How many people got... Uh, uh, less than a hundred and uh, from a hundred to ninety. Nobody got a ninety percent. Nobody got an A on this test. How many got a um, you know less than ninety but uh, up to eighty percent? You're kidding me. Are you guys just being modest? How many got seventy percent? You all flunked the test? Well, why did you go so fast through it then? Why didn't you sit there and just beat your head on the table until you got them right? So you mean everyone flunked the test? Can I see? Okay. Just want to make sure that you guys aren't just being modest. Okay, well, I'm glad we did this. That's a little shocking. I thought everybody whipped through the test because you just got like this tremendously great grade on it. And you were like, okay, there's 
I'm done with that peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I mean, when you're sitting there and you're doing an exercise, guys, you sit there and you don't just give up on the exercise while you're maybe you thought you knew what you were. Maybe you thought you were putting the right answer down, maybe. All right, well, let's go through this then. We've got some work to do, obviously. Um, okay, so number one. The various resources used to create a company's goods and services are collectively referred to as, remember we had factors of production, so we had labor, we had what? We had real estate, and we had capital that were our primary factors of production that we need to consider. Okay, so um, the materials used to create services, etc., are factors of production. And I think as we went through some of the lectures, I kept mentioning, we'd say, there's a factor of production, and we would call those out. Okay, so those are called factors of production. Um, we talk about real capital, and the key word here being what? Real. No, real, like in real estate. Okay, so land, et cetera, is real capital. And so we say, which of these is going to be real capital? The manufacturing plant is like real estate, isn't it? Like a house is real estate, a plant is real estate. Oh, did I? Okay, we'll fix that then. It should be D. Manufacturing plant is real capital. Yeah, I did say C. So it's D. The answer to that one is D, not C. Real capital is the manufacturing plant, D. So if you got that one right, you can add that to your score, obviously. It doesn't matter, but the answer is what? D here. Okay. Okay. Uh, maybe I'm, maybe I am got off track and started reading off the wrong answer somehow. Maybe that's what happened. Okay, number three, the physical products that a business offers are called goods. When we look at these, what the businesses offer, it's goods and services, right? Okay, and so number four, if Jose called an electrician to repair some appliances in his home, which of the following terms best describes the electrical repairs that's a service right they're not providing a good they're providing a service number five robert wants to upgrade his real estate company's computer system which of the following factors of production would robert uh, find least useful for his project and uh, real capital is not going to be particularly useful for a computer company right these other things financial capital technology human resources uh, would all be considered something that's useful okay number six Addison wants to use her new t-shirt store to be environmentally friendly which concept of the green economy with concept of green economy in the mind which of the following business initiative would best make her business greener answer is what install solar panels right okay now that's just considering green aspect of the business you know i've had these solar panel people come to my house a couple of times want me to put solar panels on my house and they start talking about that i'll start recouping my investment after 20 years well i'm 54 years old you know that's not a whole lot of uh, time guaranteed for me to be able to start recouping my investment on something so i never do it but one of the arguments that they give to me is well yeah but you're going to be more greener and a better you know um you know um world citizen blah blah but uh i can't justify it uh, if i'm gonna have to if i'm not gonna see payback for 20 years of course i'm an accountant so um okay but if she just wanted to be greener she could consider consider just considering the green aspects yes um putting solar panels on would make that would make sense number seven one of uh one example of a complementary good is a cell phone and wireless phone service 
okay you can't really have one without the other right and I think we gave peanut butter and jelly in here as an example and maybe that's more of a preference issue where you have a situation where you can't have one without the other that's a better example of complementary so if you're sitting and saying, well cheese and crackers is like peanut butter and jelly um, you know the best example here was the cell phone and the wireless service complementary goods okay a government allows some utilities right to operate as managed monopolies because uh, you know a lot of times there's a, a certain um, infrastructure that's necessary to provide a product like water like electricity and so the government allows those entities well really it's the government that provides water the government owns the water systems but for electricity like PG&E it's a monopoly because of the infrastructure that would be necessary to uh, provide that electricity service you can't have 50 companies trying to compete against each other the fat for that okay um, this one perfect competition occurs when there are many buyers and sellers of product that are virtually identical and I think I gave the example in here of fruits and vegetables you know you go into a store and that's pretty much in the vegetable section that's pretty much perfect competition when you go to buy broccoli you don't say well is this you know the, the special broccoli from company X you just pretty much grab whatever broccoli sitting there right okay and uh, remember we said that some companies may try to move up from perfect competition by you know making their products seem different I think I gave the example in here they mentioned avocados from Mexico or something you know to try to make theirs different than others but you know avocado is an avocado pretty much okay number 10 a country uh, a continuous excuse me decrease in the level of prices over time is deflation if prices increase over time that's what that's going to be inflation right disinflation means what means that the level of in, or the rate of, of inflation is decreasing even though we still have inflation the rate is decreasing I should say and um, a depression is what is a uh, very very bad sustained recession right remember we talked about the different parts of the uh, economy I'm not sure what a deflection is I know what it is in football when the ball hits one guy's hand and deflects off to the next I think that's just some sort of way of them putting something up there to confuse you disinflation is when we have a decrease in the rate of inflation so we're still having inflation but let's say last quarter the inflation rate was three percent this period we still in inflated but we inflate only two percent instead of three percent that's disinflation the rate is decreasing okay number 11 the government determines at the appropriate level of taxes and spending through its fiscal policy that was fiscal policy and the government does this when they decide to tax or not tax and if you're paying attention to the election if you can get past you know what some rude comment somebody made at some point in time they do in from time to time talk about tax policy versus uh, mon uh, versus uh, versus uh, spending policy uh, and they talk about really both of those things and they go back and forth on that quite a bit so that's all called fiscal policy okay okay good number 12 the government makes the supply of uh, manages the uh, money supply through monetary policy they say the government this question probably would have been more accurate to say what the Federal Reserve is the one that really governs the monetary policy and we talked about their various methods and so we say the Federal Reserve's manage the country's money supply and this is more accurate through monetary policy to control inflation by doing all the following except doing what tax policy is not part of the Fed that is the purview of the government through the executive branch and the legislative branch Congress right number 14 social responsibility investing is defined as investing only in companies that have met a uh, co corporate social responsibility this is investors 
putting pressure on the companies to have, remember we talked about the different pillars of corporate social responsibility and the investors put that, uh, that pressure on the company. And I think I mentioned in here that um, that was the major thing that caused uh, South Africa to release mass, uh, Nelson Mandela. At the end of the day, it came down to money. When U.S. investors started saying, we're going to disinvest, we're not going to buy um, stock in uh, South African companies anymore, then all of a sudden they saw the light and saw the reasons as to why they should release him. So uh, this is probably one of the more uh, effective ways of uh, holding companies accountable to have a, uh, a corporate social responsibility that uh, meets your expectations. Number 15, Jeremy is a telemaker who is uh, hearing impaired, telemarketer who's hearing impaired. His hearing aid helps him take calls at work and uh, compensates for the disability. He accidentally broke his hearing aid and did not have the money to replace it. He asked for an advance on salary and was refused. He asked for a loan and was refused. As a result, Jeremy was unable to make calls for customers and he was fired from his job for poor performance. Which government agency shall Jeremy call? This is the EEOC that does this sort of thing. If you have a feeling that you're being discriminated against based on ethnic or um, or uh, you know sexual diversity, gender diversity, um, and disability, um, you can reach out to the EEOC and they will um, they will take a look at that. They look at something called patterns in behavior, uh, uh, patterns and practices, and if they see that a company is engaging in patterns and practices that are indicating of discrimination, they will uh, they will come down on them for that. So that would be the government agency that would do that. Okay, Elizabeth Warren is a member of the Senate Committee on Banking, Housing, and Urban Affairs. That's the one question that sort of didn't come out of the test bank questions that I kind of threw in there because I had mentioned uh, her a couple times. And uh, she is on the Senate Committee on Banking, Housing, and Urban Affairs. Uh, part of the reason that I put that up there is so not that you know where Elizabeth Warren is, but that you understand the way Congress is structured a little bit. Congress is structured by committee. And so what happens is various committees have various oversight of different parts of the government. And um, they then recommend to the broader con Congress how, there should, uh, how they should vote on various matters related to regulation for banks and that sort of thing. OK, don't worry if I'm keeping you awake, this will be over pretty soon and then you'll get the stimulation of uh, your exam here in a couple of uh, next week. OK, uh, number 17, a term that describes the movement of production away from a domestic production site to a foreign location is called offshoring. OK, we have outsourcing that we talked about as well, but outsourcing is just moving it outside of the company. If we go overseas, that's offshoring. And we're seeing more and more that companies are doing this with uh, certain functions such as accounting services. They're moving offshore. Uh, and I told you how I had a, a former student that actually lost her job uh, because they sent all the accounting functions overseas. and. Uh, she got into the situation she was literally having to train the people that were taking her job from her at one point in time. Um, of course, she found another job because she's very competent in accounting, but uh, she did have to deal with that uh, offshoring situation. Okay, the company of Kappa sells pizza for a dollar each within its borders, but Kappa exports pizzas at a price of 30 cents. This is dumping. And companies uh, companies will, it's illegal for companies to do this uh, within the U.S. to uh, get antitrust regulation would stop them from doing this. You can't sell your goods at less than your cost to put somebody else out of business. But there is really no... Um, no uh, law that says that you can't do this country to country. Of course, uh, there could be complaint to World Trade Organization. Remember, we mentioned the WTO, and uh, they could have some uh, something to say about this and uh, put some pressures on uh, companies to um, not do this. We'll go through the answers again. Uh, sorry, we got done a little sooner than 
everybody was done and just sitting there looking at each other. So I'll go over it with you afterwards, okay? Um, number 19, um, a micro entrepreneur is something that what? Or micro or whatever, however you pronounce this, okay? Is someone that wants to keep their business relatively small. They don't have this vision of this huge company that will be the world leader or the nation's largest or the fastest growing. They don't care about any of that. They just want to keep their company relatively small. Okay. Number 20, regardless of how well or poorly a fr franchise business is doing, franchises must give the franchisor a monthly royalty fee. This is one of the disadvantages of being a um, of owning a franchise and that you're going to have to pay some sort of franchise fee the policy in this class is no cell phones I don't care how disinterested you are in this class I don't want to sit here and watch you text while I'm going through material that's supposed to help you okay okay uh, number 20 um, what is the process of performing research and analysis of a business to uncover any hidden problems associated with it? And this is what? Our due diligence process? Okay, so we'll do due diligence to see that uh, the company is meeting our expectations. Okay, that can be from a financial standpoint. Uh, that can be from a social responsibility standpoint, right? That we can do that. Okay. Okay, good. That was all the questions here? Okay. Okay, so I think that it's good that we did this exercise because um, I think the way we've kind of been going through this material, it's been a little bit easier to check out of this class and just sort of watch the lectures. And none of this material is particularly hard, but if you sit there and you just ignore it, or you go ahead and you've decided that this is the class where you'll catch up on your sleep or this is the class where you'll catch up on your texting or something like that or you've decided to not show up and float in and out and come in when it's uh, convenient for you to come in okay this is the outcome of those things so I think we're gonna have to recommit ourselves uh, to the material here now and go back and take a look at the slides that I've posted up there. The slides have in there embedded questions so you can see how the questions relate to the material that we've talked about and um, you can watch the lecture videos if there's things there that you don't understand or you can obviously reach out to me for things that you don't understand. But you're going to have to obviously spend some time going through and making sure you're comfortable with the questions that I've put in there. The questions that I've put in the slides and the ones that I've given to you in this mock midterm are going to be consistent with what you're going to see on the midterm. So if you master this material, there's no reason why you can't come in here and, you know, ace this test next week. If you continue to resist and you're going to try to look at all this the night before, and just sort of walk in and wing it, then you're going to get a C or a D or an F on a class that the entire world expects that you should get an A in. Okay. Question? On the actual midterm, we will have 30 questions. I will give you the entire class time to work through the test. You need to bring the Scantron with you. It's that skinny green Scantron. Don't get a recycled Scantron, by the way. Those recycled Scantrons don't go through the machine properly. So spend the $2 or whatever it is they charge you for a Scantron and uh, bring the real thing. Okay, so it's that skinny green Scantron, not the recycled one. Because I had a student who told me, well, I use the recycled Scantron, and that was why the Scantron machine did a number on her. Scantron marked all her questions wrong and I don't want to sit here and have to see you upset because you think your test wasn't graded fairly, right? Right here? Okay, this is the Scantron that you need to bring. We'll go through and uh, I'll give you the entire class time. If you're done before then, 
you're going to hand me the Scantron, you're going to sign out, okay? That's going to be the process, and then um, I'll go ahead and I'll run the Scantrons. I'll put the grades up in Canvas before our next meeting. We'll go through that exam, and uh, if we have time, we'll start on the next chapter. What was it, Chapter 6 now? Right, so we'll start on Chapter 6. The exam goes through Chapter 5, right? So when we start talking again, lecturing again, we'll start on Chapter 6. Um, for the people that I haven't seen in a while, almost didn't recognize some of you, um, I'm telling you, you're cruising for a bruising. You're going to run into the situation where I'm going to start taking roll, and you're not going to be here, and then you're going to wonder why all of a sudden I dropped your grade or, you know, withdrew you from the class or something like that. So I would not play with it. So far, there really hasn't been any penalty to being derelict in your responsibility to come to the class. That time is coming, I'm telling you, and it's when you least expect it, and then you're going to wonder why. Okay, so um, obviously you'll be here for the test next time, but going forward, make sure you're hanging on to that, uh, to that discipline. Okay, any questions? Okay, guys, you can take those tests with you. Um, we're done, okay? And um, for the folks that came in late or came back uh, after we'd already started, hang in there, and I will go through um, this test with you so you can see uh, what was going on, okay?